Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name is Chris, and today we have an exciting project for you. This is going to be part one of our solar powered Wi Fi project. So, you can see right behind me here, I have a solar panel. And inside this little battery box here, we have a number of components that are going to enable us to use solar power to power a nano station, uh, at least the station side of a wireless bridge, right? And theoretically, you could power both sides of a wireless bridge if you needed to, but we're going to measure this and see how much power, how much solar panel wattage do we need, and how much battery power do we need to keep that nano station up and running. Uh, in addition to potentially some other devices such as a, uh, a camera or an access point, right? Something that's going to draw uh, power from this uh, setup as well. So as you can see here, the sun is just starting to hit the solar panel. It's getting bright out here. And um, this solar panel array right here gets about six hours worth of solid sunlight uh, during the daytime. It's not ideal. This could be in a much better spot. I just happened to set it up out here on my back deck because it was easy to set it up right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at all of the pieces that go into this solar setup, and I will also put a parts list of all the pieces down in the description below. Those are Amazon affiliate links. If you click on those links, uh, it doesn't change your price at all, but it does give us a couple bucks for the referral. So thank you very much for that, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the components. Okay, starting with the solar panels, uh, this kit that I have right here is a 45 watt solar panel kit that I got from Harbor Freight. Uh, I think it was around $129 or $149, somewhere in that range. It's three 15 watt panels. Now, if given the choice to do it again, I would not buy this kit. I don't like, uh, it's, it's just really cheap. Of course, everything from Harbor Freight is really cheap. Uh, but if you look over here, uh, this uh, support post already snapped. So this is pretty thick plastic, but it actually just snapped. And uh, I've got it duct taped up there and kind of working. But again, you're probably much better off getting two 25 watt panels uh, instead of this uh, 45 watt kit from Harbor Freight. But ultimately, as long as you're in the 45, 50 watt range, that should be plenty of solar panel uh, for the, the purposes of what we're doing here. Okay, so on the back side of this solar panel, it has one wire that comes off of each solar panel, and then it kind of goes into this uh, proprietary wire that brings together the three into one. Again, this is just part of the Harbor Freight thing. If you purchase separate solar panels, uh, it will have some sort of way to wire them together and then wire them out to a charge controller or whatever you're putting them into. So. I wouldn't worry too much about this stuff that I've got going on here. Uh, basically, your solar panels wire into the charge controller. So let's take a look at uh, next. This is a battery box. So this is uh, about the cheapest battery box that I found. It's really good quality. It's weather resistant. It does have vents on top uh, that can be removed, but that will keep the water out. And you certainly want uh, something that'll keep the water out of the battery box because uh, batteries and water are not going to mix very well. Uh, this also has these sort of cable management runs off the side so that you can run the uh, the battery cables as well as any other cables you need out the, t uh, the top of the box. Okay, here's a look inside the battery box. We've got our battery. Um, then we've got a little separator, which is kind of nice. It came with a little uh, separator unit that you can put in a number of positions here. And let's pull all this stuff out so we can see how it's wired together. Okay, so the key to this whole setup is this little charge controller right here. And uh, we can see that we're pushing 12.6 volts. We can see that the, the little light is blinking, indicating that we are currently charging our batteries. And our batteries are at, uh, looks like uh, five, four out of five bars on the battery meter there. Now, what I've found so far from using this, and this has been up and running like this and powering that nano station for about three days now. So every day it drops down to about three bars and then charges all the way back up while the sun's hitting it. And then at night it drops back down to three bars. So that gives you kind of a, an idea of how much power that thing is taking. I could probably have a little bit more power off of this solar uh, array, but having that extra capacity also provides for like if the day is not very sunny or if it's raining out here, right? Uh, we would want this to be able to last potentially more than 24 hours in the event that there is some sort of issue. Okay, so these two wires here are in from the solar panel and the next two wires are out to the battery. So you can see, see if I can get a good clear shot of that. So 
solar panel, battery, right? So in from, that's basically all you have to do to wire it up. Two wires in from the solar panel, two wires out to the battery. Now I'm using uh, on the battery, which is just a 12 volt battery, I'm using just regular alligator clips, uh, but if I was gonna make this a more permanent solution, I would try to wire these in a little bit better because alligator clips are uh, not really ideal for a permanent setup. Now this battery is a 12 volt battery and that's probably all you need for this setup. You could potentially tie together two 12 volt batteries, get 24 volts. Again, I'm not too experienced with solar, I'm just learning, but that is, what I under that is how I understand it. The next piece of the puzzle, and the reason that we like this charge controller is because it has two USB outputs. Right, so we've got USB output, so basically solar in, battery out, and then we've also got USB output. If I also wanted to put up an inverter, I can also separately tie in an inverter right here uh, on this third set of um, screws right here. Okay, so, but let's take a look at the USB out, because this is, this is really the key to this whole thing. We've got our USB cable, and then we are using an Air Gateway Installer Pro or maybe it's called an Air Gateway Pro installer model. Uh, and what this is made for, this is a little ubiquity uh, PoE injector, 24 volt passive PoE injector. And what this does, or the reason why this is uh, key to this solar setup, is because it can be powered by USB. Now, they made this thing Basically so that instead of you know powering it with USB, you could have a battery bank, uh, just like a battery bank that you use to charge your cell phone, plug it into this device, and then you know while you're out in the field, you can basically remotely um, connect to a nano station or some sort of ubiquity device, right? So you could either power it with PoE in, or you could power it with um, USB. So since it's powered by USB, uh, we then have a PoE out, which goes out to here, uh, which then goes out to my nano station. Okay, so let's go take a look at that next. So that blue cable there is the cable that goes out to the nano station. So you can see it runs off the side here, along my deck, and then down to the nano station itself, which is right over there. Now. I have a camera hooked up to that nano station as well, and we'll talk about that in a second. But let me go down and follow the rest of this um, path, so to speak, and we'll see where the nano station goes from there. Okay, so here we have another view. That's my deck right up there where the solar panel array is. You can't really see it through this bush, but it's like right up there. Uh, and then we come down, there's the blue cable coming off the deck all the way down and then into the nano station right here. Uh, with the camera attached. Now, notice that that's not wired into anything else. That is only wired in to the solar panel. So if we flip around here, we can then see the second part of that, which is this nano station over here. So this nano station is then wired through my door into my office. Okay, so this is actually uh, where I sit. This is where I do my videos right here. And then this nano station is just going right into this door and then plugging into my LAN. Okay, so let's go inside. Let's take a look at the setup in a little bit more detail. And we will see what I'm doing to measure the uptime of the nano station. Okay, back in my office. And here you can see the nano station. This is the access point side of the wireless bridge. And uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the architecture of this entire solution. And hopefully this will all become clear to you guys here. Okay, so on my screen, we have the entire setup. And let me zoom in a little bit here. We'll start from the beginning. Um, so over here, of course, we have the sun. Uh, then we have our solar panel. Again, this is not the one that I have. Uh, this is just a picture I pulled off of uh, Amazon. It can really be any solar panel. Uh, for the one nano station, however, I recommend a 50 watt or higher solar panel array. 50, watt is, 50 watts is probably about right. Um, the one that I have is 45 watts. It seems to be able to handle the nano station just fine given sunny conditions of about six hours of sunlight per day. Okay, from there, we are wired positive and negative into our charge controller. And the charge controller is then wired out positive and negative to the battery. So the charge controller basically puts power out to an inverter, or for instance, in our case, to the Ubiquiti Air Gateway installer. And then it also puts power into the battery. So it, uh, it, it sort of is the brains behind the operation, if you will. 
So then out of the charge controller, so out to the battery and then USB out to the Ubiquiti Air Gateway installer. From there, we come down into our nano station. And this is the station side of our wireless bridge. It's 192.168.200.30. And then of course that shoots a wireless connection over to the access point side of our bridge, which is 192.168.200.31, which is then wired into my LAN. Okay, so if I bring up a command prompt, ping-t192.168.200.31, this is the local side. I can get pings on this, no problem. And now if I ping 30, this is the remote side. So again, no problem, I'm getting pings, I'm getting very good latency, uh, one millisecond, two millisecond latency out to the remote side of the wireless bridge. It's powered on and working. Okay, so let's log into the remote side of the bridge. This is the solar side of the bridge. And here we can see that we have a minus 38 dBm signal. That's really, really good. Uh, again, though, it's only shooting about 50 feet or so uh, through a clear line of sight. So I would expect that the signal would be perfect. Here we can see 99% air max quality, 99% air max capacity, transmit receive rate solid 300 megabits is what it's estimating. By the way, if you're interested in how I set up this wireless bridge, go ahead and check out my Nano Station M5 video. It tells you exactly how to set up this type of wireless bridge between two nano stations. Uh, very, actually my most popular video on YouTube, believe it or not. So I'll put a link to that uh, up in the corner here. So we can see here that we have a really, really good wireless bridge connection. Super solid, no problem. One half of that wireless bridge connection is powered by solar. So that's great, but if the solar side goes down, we need to know about that. So how are we measuring the uptime of the remote side, the solar side of the wireless bridge? Well, I'm doing that with cacti. So I have cacti set up here, and I have traffic statistics for the remote side nano station, and I also have ping latency for the remote side nano station. So if that connection drops, so if the solar power, or if the battery runs out of juice in the middle of the night, and it powers down, the nano station on the remote side, I will be able to see that. That will show up in these cacti graphs. Um, the cacti graphs, by the way, I have running off of this little guy right here. This is a Raspberry Pi 2. It's about two years old and it's handling this just fine. So I also have it on my screen behind me here so that I can keep a graph uh, up and running and I can just keep my eye on it during the day. Okay, so now we're measuring our graph. We should be able to see uh, when the connection drops, if the connection drops, and basically I'm just going to let it run like this for a few days uh, or probably closer to a week and just make sure that it's not dropping that connection. And if it doesn't drop the connection to the remote nano station, the solar powered nano station, after a week, then we know we have sufficient battery power and wattage from the solar panel to power at least one nano station. Now, that being said, I tried, if you remember when we were outside, I had a UVC camera also plugged into that nano station. So the nano station M5 has a secondary port. And in that secondary port, you can enable, I think it's under advanced here. Yeah, you can enable a PoE pass-through. Okay, so when you enable a PoE pass-through, that's basically putting 24 volt passive PoE into the secondary port of the nano station in order to power something like an access point, or in my case, a UVC camera. Now, that worked, okay? The camera turned on and it was working, but it kept rebooting. It would be on for about 30 seconds and then it would reboot. And then it would be on for about 30 seconds and reboot. And so it kept doing that over and over again. So I suspect that the air gateway installer is not providing enough power to the nano station to power up both the nano station and the camera attached to the nano station. So what I might do instead is I have an inverter as well. So I'm going to try to maybe run an inverter off of the solar charge controller. So you can plug an inverter in right here. I'll run an inverter off of it and then plug in a regular Ubiquiti PoE injector to power up the nano station, which then hopefully will also power up the camera stably and reliably because right now it's just not working very well at all. Uh, okay, so we will try that before we get to the next update. And so in the next update, we're gonna check what was our uptime, how did it look? And then second, if I switch the air gateway installer to an inverter instead, does that then have the power to power up both the nano station M5 and an attached device? Okay, also, 
If you guys have any questions at all about this solar setup, put them in the comments of this video, and I will try to get those question answered, questions answered in a follow-up video. So um, again, I'm new to solar, so I'm not entirely sure that I'm doing everything correctly, and I'm not entirely sure of the measurements and the wattage. I'm not an electrical guy. I'm not a solar guy. I'm just trying to learn, and so far, this setup is working for me. So if you guys have questions about this setup, put those in the comments below. I will try to get those answered as best I can, and it also spurs conversation so that we can talk about this setup. Is there something that you guys would be doing differently to power this type of solution? Okay, so that just about does it for our solar powered Wi-Fi part one video. If you guys want to purchase any of this equipment, again, links are down below, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So my name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.